Hello, Math 133 students. I'm Alana Tucky, the lead faculty for Math 133, and I'm going to be guiding you through a series of tutorials for project number one. In this particular tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do task number one, part one and two, which is how to download your GDP data and how to clean up your GDP spreadsheet. All right, so before I go there, let's talk about the project overall. You're going to use gapminder.org to access data for the purpose of exploring descriptive statistics and graphs with Microsoft Excel. Or technically, you could also use Google Spreadsheet, but um, it's not a perfect mimic of Excel. So there are a few things that are going to be different if you try to use Google Spreadsheet, but it is technically possible. Um, there will be some things you just can't do even with Google Spreadsheet. All right, so the entire assignment is to be done in multiple worksheets in one workbook file, Excel or spreadsheet file, and submitted in my stat lab under course tools document sharing by the due date. You should never, never touch your calculator through the entire project. All calculations and tables must be formed entirely using your spreadsheet program, Excel or um, Google, or no credit will be given. The whole point of this is to follow along and learn the basics of Excel. That's the whole point of this project. So if you use your calculator, you're defeating the whole purpose and you'll get no credit. All right, remember to save your file if you're working in Excel every step of the way. If you're working in Google Spreadsheet, that won't be as big a problem because it's automatically saved because it's in the cloud. But if you're working in Excel, you'll have to save, save, save all the time so you don't lose it. For both tasks, you're going to use the whatever random year was assigned to you by your instructor. And then, of course, the tutorials, which I am making currently, will be available at that link right there. So always follow the tutorials. I will guide you through a lot of this project. And then you'll just have to answer the questions by yourself. All right, so let's begin with the GDP data. Um, we are going to start with downloading the GDP data. So we are going to go to gapminder.org. Gapminder.org. And then the website, of course, is a live website, so sometimes it's going to change. But in general, there's a data tab, and that's what you're looking for. So you click on the data tab, and then it's going to ask you to select an indicator. And what we're interested in is GDP slash divided by capita. All right, so there it right is, GDP per capita. We don't want these growth ones, so ignore those. Go for the one that's GDP slash capita in US dollars. So I click on that, and it's going to show me a quick view of the table. This is the table that you're going to download. And you have an option. You can download it as an XLSX file or a CSV file. So if you're working in Microsoft Excel, the newer versions, you're going to want to click on XLSX. If you're working with like Google Spreadsheet or an earlier version of Excel, you might want to try the CSV file. They'll kind of both be brought up in a spreadsheet program, so it's kind of whatever you want to do. So I'm going to click on the XLSX file right there. There we go. Um, the CSV file, it's very similar. It just might give you a little bit of formatting grief. So if you have the option, try to use the XLSX file. Now it's in a protected view, of course, because this is owned by somebody. So you have to first say, I want to enable editing, which is right here. Say, yep, I'm ready to go. Let's enable editing. I don't think the CSV file has that problem, but an XLSX will. Okay, so we've got everything done. That's task one right there. Going to the website, downloading it, and all that jazz. Let me double check real quick. All right, so we did it. Oh, we have to save this. Okay, so we're gonna save our downloaded file to our computer. Remember, do not put a hashtag in that file name. It will break, um, it doesn't break your computer, it breaks the uploading on, on my stat lab. So just always have just your name and then number, and that's about it. So let me go back to mine right here. So I'm gonna click File, I'm gonna click Save As, and I'm actually gonna put it on my desktop. The thing about this is you wanna put it someplace wise, someplace you're going to be able to find it again. So put it wherever that is. If that's a folder, fine. If that's in your OneDrive, great. If it's um, on your desktop, so be it, right? Put it someplace where you're gonna know where it is because you're gonna to have to access it multiple times. Because you're probably, one, not gonna do this in one sitting, and two, you're gonna to have to upload it eventually to my stat lab. All right, so now you type your last name and then project one. You can see I already did it with a CSV file once to see how it would work. So I'm going to say last name, project one, and I click save. 
and there it is. So now, of course, it's not last name. You put your last name. So put Smith or Johnson or whatever. Um, and now we're going to clean up the data just a little bit. So we have task one done. We've saved our file. All is grand. So now we just need to clean up this spreadsheet and we'll be golden. OK, so a couple things. We're going to rename our data tab. So let me show you how to do that. So down here, it's got this horrible name, GDP per capita, US, whatever that is. So I just kind of double click. So I put my, my mouse down there, it turns into that arrow, and then I double click down there. And I can say, hey, I want to type this GDP. Or if I want to get fancy about it, GDP per capita. There you go. That'll work also. So name it GDP or name it GDP per capita, either way. Now that tab is named something sensible instead of what it was. All right, what else? Um, I would like it so that this top row, do you see how it's um, that top row is almost all the different years? I want to bold those so that makes it a little bit more obvious. So I, what I'm doing is I'm going over to the little one. So if you let your mouse kind of go to that one, it turns into an arrow. And if you click, it's going to take that whole row to the right of the one. And then I want to click the bold up here. Or you can hit Control B and it'll make everything bold. And that makes it more obvious. Oh, these are the years and these are the data that go with those years. I get it. And I don't like the fact that country is not capitalized. So I'm going to capitalize country. That bothers me. All right. So now you're going to pick your year. So whatever year your instructor gave you, so be it. So if your instructor gave you 1974, for example, what you want to do is you want to move your cursor up. See how I move it to the O column and it turns into that little downward arrow. If I hold on my left mouse button and I drag across, I've highlighted all these columns that I don't want. If I right click and delete, then those columns are gone. And then I would do it for all the other columns. So I would just go away over here, right click and delete. And then I'm left with nothing but 74. That's what you'll do for whatever your year is. So pick your year out, go find it. You might have to scroll to the right to see it. The scroll bar is down here on the right and then or down in the bottom part. And you scroll until you find whatever column you need, whatever column you're working with. Now, me personally, I'm actually going to work with the easiest column, which is 1960. <laughs> so I'm going to do that one, but which means I'm going to highlight and delete all of these columns. I don't want any one of them. So I'm just kind of scrolling over to the right. I'm holding my left mouse button down. Here, I'll go back. I went to the C. I kind of moved up to the C. I click with my left mouse button. And it highlights the column. If I hold down that left mouse button and I drag to the right, it'll grab every column over here to the right. And I just scroll, scroll, scroll until I have all of them. Then I right click and delete. And they're gone. And that's it. All right. So. That's half the battle right there. I got rid of all the years I don't want. So pick your year, whatever that is, get rid of everything else. Now, the last bit is that it wants us to organize this. It wants us to organize it um, in ascending order, in climbing order. Oh, and real quick, this semester that I'm making this video, this statement was there, but it is not meaningful anymore. They got rid of this. Um, so don't worry about it. It's actually right here. That description is right here. So what GDP per capita is, is right there. So I would highly recommend reading that over, seeing if it want to make sense. So GDP is gross domestic product. It's gross as the old, not like, oh, that's gross. It's as in the old fashioned word for gross. Like I bought a gross of eggs. It's, it's a term for a lot, right? So gross, it's an economics term in other words. Domestic, made in the country, product products. So what it's saying is, hey, how much stuff does this country make? It's it's a measurement um, in economics of how much stuff a country makes. Per capita means per head, per person. So it says divided by the mid-year population. So they said, hey, in the middle of the year, this is how much how many people this country had. And so we took how much stuff the country makes and divided by how many people, and that gives us gross domestic product. It's measured in US dollars because the U.S. is currently the world currency, so that's the um, the amount that it's measured in. So it's U.S. dollars per person. So that's something to keep in mind for, say, when you have to write interpretation questions later. All right, so what I want to do is I want to highlight these cells right here. You technically could do the cells all the way down to Zimbabwe. 
And what I'm doing is I'm holding my left mouse button down. I kind of click on the country cell, which is A1, and then I just scroll right with my mouse, and then I scroll down, 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 like that. So you can just do those cells, or because this is the whole column, I can actually just do the columns. So I can highlight columns A, B, just like I did when I deleted. And now I want to go to data. So I'm going to click on the data tab. And I, it's tempting to do A to Z, Z to A, but don't do that. Click on the little sort one right here. So it says sort. So I click on that. And it's going to say, OK, how do you want to sort this? Well, first of all, I want to see, see how it has a little checkbox for my data has headers. That means that country and 1960 are not going to get moved around. They're going to stay where they are, which is good. We want them to stay. They should stay at the top. And now I want it to sort by the values. In my case, it's 1960, that second column, column B. So the label for it was 1960. For you, it'll be whatever year you have. So if you're working with 1974, it'll be 1974. And then I want to go smallest to largest because I want it to ascend. So if I click OK, there it is. So I can see the lowest value was Myanmar, and then I can scroll down and see the highest value. And there we have it. These countries don't have data for those years, so you ignore them. You can leave them down there, and they're not hurting you. But we're going to ignore all of them for the sake of our problems. So don't worry about them. They don't get figured in. They don't factor in to any of your answers to any of the questions. You just basically ignore them. Leave them in there, um, so that way your instructor can see that you had the whole spreadsheet. But ignore them. One other thing to do to clean this up is you see how some countries have big long names. I want to make it so my column can accommodate that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cursor up and I'm going to put it on the line between A and B. You see that? It turns into this double-sided arrow. So if I double click, it'll make it as wide as it needs to be to accommodate the longest name, which is St. Vincent and the Grenadines right there. So it accommodates that name automatically. It's either that or you drag it yourself. So you can drag it low or you can drag it high, etc. But me personally, I just double click and poof, it makes it as wide as it needs to be. And there we go. We have all our data. Our GDP data is all here and it's all organized. We have all the countries that we have data for and we have all the remaining countries that we can't do anything with. They will not count for our particular problem. And I believe that's all we have to do for task two. Let me double check. Yep, we deleted all the other columns. We sorted our data in ascending order. So if we're finished with part two, you know what that means. It's time to save. So I'm going to go to File. Oops, and I'm going to click the little Save icon right there. Or I can go to File, Save right there. And again, if you're doing this in Google Spreadsheet, it works ex pretty much exactly the same way, except you won't have to worry about saving because it's automatically saved.